this, Dwight? Here's a Mr. Niles Neckendorfer, 93 years old, getting married for the first time to Edwina Mickler. They lived in the duplex all their lives, and now they're going on a honeymoon. <laughs> this is this guy's comedy. They're going on a honeymoon downstairs. <laughs> oh, look out. Now, look out, look out, look out, look out! What? Oh, huh? Somebody Old man Watterson just backed his pickup into this Chevy. It's coming out of his driveway. Holy cow. Mr. Watterson is a wonderful man. He's church people. Mm. Yeah. Is he on his feet? Oh, that's a big mess. Huh? Is he all right? Yeah, they're okay. They're just up on their feet screaming at each other. They'll be all right. Well, surely you ought to go out there and help him and try to, you know, give him a hand. They don't want us to butt in. Yeah, I guess you're right. Hey, hey, look, look here. It's Miss Kelly. Oh, Dad, will you stop it? I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you this time. I'm not putting you on. I'm not telling tall tales. Do we have to go through this every morning? Come no, on. not every morning. You look here. Look out there. Mm, boy, Say, I know. Uh, maybe those guys do need some help. Well, I know that she's cold. You know it must be 20 above yeah, out there. Yeah, maybe I better get the coats, you know? Yeah, get two of them. Let's, uh, let's go out there and be neighborly. You, huh? Yeah. You put the coat on her first, and then I'll put the coat on her second. <laughs> you do? Who are you trying to ditch? No one. So how do you get rid of them? Hey guys. Why don't you listen? And listen tight. Your dad came up with kind of a fun idea. Uh, it's the making of a sandwich. Uh, what it is, a rye, rye bread sandwich, okay? Lots of mayo, turkey, about six, eight slices of white meat, all right? Tomatoes, a little bacon, lettuce, some cheese, about that thick. He said, you couldn't possibly do that in four minutes. Nice try, Grandpa. I'll make it. Thanks, Charlie. He's a nice guy. I love him. You know something? I want to tell you something. My will is constantly being revised. Grandpa, oh. what would you do if some second grader was picking on you? Oh, kind of simple. If he was riding a bicycle, and a lot of second graders do, what you do is uh, just make it along the curb slowly, you know, and swing that old Catalina door open, you know. <laughs> oh, boy, he's a silhouette in your car. <laughs> you got some problems, somebody uh, hassling you? Yeah, but he won't tell us who. You know, uh, whoever it is, tomorrow, before you go into the great school, seek that person out. You know, come up on him slowly. Jump on him. It's good if you can come up behind him. I hate to see that, but <laughs> it surprises them. Then let your nails go for a few days. <laughs> What's going on? Oh, I just give the kid a little advice. Oh. No, I gotta get to bed. I'm gonna get up at 6 a.m., be at school to yell at a bunch of school bus drivers. Well, guys and I will finish up here. We got this army to put to bed. Yeah. And uh, you know one thing about the cat. 
I'm told the kids I don't want them feeding the cat any more peanut butter because he can't meow anymore. <laughs> someone back off is the threat of physical force. Disagree. Psychological warfare. What's that? Tell this kid you have some completely gross disease and I bet he won't even go near you. <laughs> ben, does this person who's bothering you have any large older brothers? I don't know. Why should I know? <sighs> Look, I know what it's like for little kids to get picked on. I pick on little kids all the time and I hate myself for it. <laughs> Just show me who's bugging you. I'll handle it. Maybe I'll bring Rigo. Oh, crap. <laughs> Let's see your killing face, soldier. Ah! Oh, it looks like that baby will be ready to go by the weekend. Mr. Davis. You ever tried driving 37 screaming monsters to school every day? Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm, not, I'm not saying that your job is easy, but I'm saying it's important. And your yellow school bus represents school to these kids, and, and you're the first class of the day. Now, it's your bus. You know, take charge of it. Now we got to be disciplinary. That's the point. I'm going to help you. Now, starting tomorrow, I'm going to have volunteers from the eighth grade on each bus, and they're going to organize activities. What? Huh. Like singing camp songs? Yeah, Scully, like singing camp songs. I hate camp songs. <laughs> you know, Scully, <clears throat> you're such a baby. Yeah! You just don't like it because it's not your idea. Yeah, right. And also, another thing, you know, a lot of these kids are getting off the bus and they're scooting over to the Friendly Mart, so I want you to make sure that each kid goes from the bus to the building. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Teachers, teachers are gonna help you. <laughs> teachers? Teachers from what school? <laughs> now, you bring them in, we'll smarten them up, and you take them home. We're all on the same team here, and what we're playing for is the future. And game time is now, ladies and gentlemen. Right now. Right. It's seven o'clock. Now I want you to get out there and drive. Drive like you mean it. Drive like you care. Drive like you want to be winners. Drive like the future of this country depends on it. Get out there and hit something. No, wait, forget that last part. Just drive. Doesn't matter how you ride it. Teachers are not going to like bus duty. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You know in Japan? Yeah, I know, I know. In Japan, we don't have buses. We have bullet trains. <laughs> In Japan, trains are so crowded. We have to have men to shove the people into the train so the door can close. But they are very polite. After they knock you down, they always say, oh, I'm so sorry. Come in. Oh, hey, Ben. Whoa. What do you have there? Some sort of rare tropical disease, huh? See, he got it. He contracted this just before recess. Oh, I see. Dad, I'm okay. It's just more drink. Oh. <laughs> Say, uh, <clears throat> Grandpa was telling me this morning about somebody giving you some trouble. Is there any connection? And you figured that nobody would touch you if you had this rare pinky inky disease, huh? You know, when I was in third grade, there was a seventh grader uh, named Joey Toba. Uh, he was always this really bad kid, you know, always in trouble with the law and... and... Did he go to jail? No, actually, he became a superior court judge. <laughs> but every day at school, he was always giving me trouble. He was always trying to pick a fight with me. And one day he comes up and he grabs me and he pushes me against the wall and he, he's about to hit me. And I looked at him like John Wayne and I said, you hit me, mister, and I'll have a posse after your butt by sundown. <laughs> That's right, he did, and he'd laugh just like that. We became really good friends. That's what you, yeah. So you need to make this person laugh, you know? Just hit him in the funny bone, you know? And just make him laugh, bust his gut. Just put him in stitches, you know? Crack him up. <laughs> now go wash that stuff off your face. Okay. How about this? 
What do you call a chicken who crosses the road, rolls in the dirt, and crosses the road again? I don't know what. A dirty double crosser. <laughs> He's a dead man. <laughs> uh, here's some late passes. Of... Hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Everyone got your memo. Oh, good, good, yeah. I think that bus thing, that's a, that's a good idea, huh? Everyone hates you. Oh, God. Uh, well, good, good. Now that they uh, have a common enemy, maybe the teachers will all band together. They have banded together. They hate you. Well, hate, that's a, that's a pretty strong word. Yes, it is, but so is bus duty. Bus duty implies extra work, pneumonia, things like that. Look, it'll all blow over in a couple of weeks when they get tired of bus duty and quit doing it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Well, they're not gonna quit. None of them. And when that yellow convoy pulls in here tomorrow, it's gonna be met by some teachers. Because, hey, this guy is not afraid to be unpopular, all right? I mean, I rather like being unpopular, you know? Let somebody else be the nice guy, huh? Right, don't you agree, huh? You're the principal. I'm just a substitute. It doesn't matter what I think. Well, sure it does. I mean, I don't want you not to like me. Right, Ben, your job is surveillance. You point out the target and step aside. All right. Rigo, you're back up. Got it. I just have one question. Why are we here? I'm making a statement, Rigo. You don't mess with a Davis or the friend of a Davis. Well, what are we going to do? I don't believe in violence. Neither do I. I believe in intimidation. <laughs> and family honor. Thanks, Rob. They're coming. Yeah, Ron, violence may be needed here. I think you should kick yourself in the head. <laughs>
Of course I am, Rigo. What other girl is there? I mean, why don't you just go for it, you know? Ask Debbie out. She's out of my league, Mr. D. She's a goddess. Oh, she... She's no goddess. She barely passed English last semester. She doesn't have to pass English. I'll speak it for her. You know, the worst thing you can do to a girl is, is put her up on a pedestal. Now, come on, Bim. What, what's the story with this Louise, huh? Is she married? No. Does she look at you like she's really crazy about you and then give you 20 reasons why she can't go out with you? She's six, Dad. Let me tell you all something about women. Women are like bass. <laughs> go out in the morning, you just might catch a big one. Put it out there on that wooden dock and look at it and say, wow. Finally got myself a bass. Big female bass. <laughs> and then the fish flops and gone in the water. And... So. <laughs> okay, Paul Hex Station, everybody off. Ah. Hey, Carol. Shut up! <laughs> you are a genius. Everybody hates you, but it's working. <laughs> towels, that's a, that's a good idea. Yes, yeah. towels are a good thing when there's wet. They're also useful if you're living in a convent and cooking on a hot plate and you don't want the mother superior to smell canned chili under your door. Boy, don't I know it. <laughs> Hey, um, how about, um, uh, how about having dinner with me sometime, huh? No. No? Why not? What, what? Well, two reasons. First, you're, you're not ready for any kind of a relationship. Probably not even casual dating. You loved your wife very much, which I respect about you. Actually, it's appealing in a tragic, romantic way. So then you don't want to have dinner with a tragically romantic man who's appealing? Of course I do, but I'm the second problem. I like to put off pleasure for as long as I can stand it. Well, who said anything about pleasure? You're also the principal of a school where I'd like to someday teach full time. Could get sticky. I'll quit. <laughs> and I'll take you out for a completely miserable evening. I know this horrible restaurant. Oh, you're gonna love it. The food's awful. Yeah, the service is terrible. There's no place to park. We'll probably get mugged. Just think about it. Huh? Just... <laughs> yes, Principal Davis. <laughs> Dad, it worked. I told her the joke. Her? Yeah, she laughed. Then I let her kiss me. Ben! <laughs> Hurry, Ben. Don't let her slip away. That's my dad. There's something funny in this book. Oh. Well, perhaps you could share it with us. <laughs> no. <laughs> what? Mm, nothing, nothing. <laughs> hey, somebody at the door. You don't suppose that could be... Debbie Kessler. <laughs> Maybe you better go hide. Debbie! <laughs> Come on down. Cosmo! Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Gunny. Good to see you. Come right down, my dear. Watch this step here. It's a bad one. What are you wearing? Mmm. Boy. Knights in Haiti. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's over the counter. <laughs> you finished sniffing there, Waldo? Come here. Did you uh, think about my offer? Uh, I just thought we should talk. <laughs> Thanks, guys.
I get it. I get it. I, uh, I gotta go upstairs and I gotta somehow close that window in my room. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> You're paying too much attention to me at school. You look at me all the time, everywhere I go. You look at me so hard, I can feel it. Not that it doesn't feel good. You're crazy about me. I am, aren't I? What if we go out and we have fun? Oh, I never let that happen. Right, what if we have a terrible time? Then we'll have to look at each other in the halls knowing we had a terrible time. No, we won't. If it doesn't work out, you'll never set foot in that school again. What if we wind up hating each other? Then I'd have to stop seeing you. If you're gonna kiss me, I'll need to stand on something. <laughs> I am gonna kiss you. I got the window closed, um, but the cat is halfway out. And the part that's halfway out is frozen, but the other part that's in my room is warm. I guess it could wait until morning. <laughs> You know, your arm uh, must be getting sort of tingly by now. Why don't you uh, let me hold her for a while? <laughs> Dad, don't you have to get up in the morning and go fishing? No, I don't want to fish tomorrow. Why don't you go fishing tonight? It's too dark out. You can't see the bait, you can't see the fish, you can't see the boat, you can't see nothing. Uh, I'm gonna go now, guys. Oh, you don't have to go. Yeah, oh, I gotta I go. Know. Yeah. You're not going already. Uh, Gee, it's just a little past 7.30. Well, got to get up early. It's a school night. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Good night. Thanks. I had a good time. Yeah. Good night, Gunny. Night, Cosmo. You got yourself a real lady there. You're lucky. Your mom was young like that once. When she got old. <laughs> <laughs>